So I've been invited to participate in a review where the authors of the review talk about vaccination paradigm that is not well appreciated. So I thought I might as well do a video on a publication that I was invited to participate on. So what's the point of this, of this paper? It talks about the difference of non -specific vaccine, non-specific effects. What does that mean? It means that vaccines can also have effects beyond protecting against the disease that they were designed for. Meaning, if you take, say, COVID-19 vaccine, that vaccine might have other effects, medical effects beyond protection against COVID-19. But we're talking about broadly about vaccines in, in general. And also, just a reminder, my name is Dr. Mikola Rashik of Merogenomics. Okay, let's get into the details really quick. Quick, while the rainbow is disappearing. <laughs> and what we're talking about is here is that there's two types of vaccines, live vaccines and non-live vaccines. Live vaccines produce non-specific effects that are beneficial, meaning they it's been observed for a long time because remember live vaccines were the first form of vaccines that we created so we have decades of data on these and what we learned is that these type of vaccines can protect beyond the disease that they're designed for meaning they're actually so powerful that they give you protection against other diseases besides what you're vaccinated against especially respiratory diseases now here's the weird tricky part, the non-live vaccines, which are typically measured just for what they're designed for, the data suggests, and this is now multiple decades of data suggests, that they do the opposite. They have harmful non-specific effects, meaning they are actually increasing the likelihood of mortality in children because of the fact that they can actually increase the likelihood of, inf of infections, other infections besides what they're, protected, what they're supposed to protect the, the vaccinated children from. So normally vaccines, when they're designed, they're only tested, only tested for what they're designed for. They're usually you don't test for, for all mortality when you're testing for vaccines, but what, studies after studies show that if you were to test for that, depending on vaccine and, vac and the vaccine order, you could have harmful effects. Now, the good news here is that, so we're not talking about stop using non-live vaccines. So non-live vaccines are basically, we're not talking about that we're taking the actual pathogen and we're just tinkering it a little bit. Non-live vaccines are basically a vehicle that does, is not the same as the pathogen, but it's just simply made to produce antigen, it provides antigen that is supposed to stimulate your body to produce antibodies against that antigen. So example with mRNA, mRNA vaccines, the antigen was the spike protein, right? So of course you can have many different types of antigen, antigens against many different diseases. What is interesting is that, it, that the data shows over the decades is, is that it's the order of vaccination that will determine whether the harmful effects or beneficial effects are seen or not. And the, the take home message here is that you do not want to finish your vaccination order with non-live vaccine. Ideally, the last vaccine when you're vaccinating a child should be a live vaccine or live vaccine along with non-live vaccine, but not non-live vaccine. So it does not mean you need to stop using them. It just means we we should start paying attention of how these are used. Finally, how, why is this happening? That's not exactly fully known, but it seems to mm, do with the fact that live vaccines stimulate and train your innate immunity. They activate innate cellular innate immunity versus non-live vaccines. They specifically activate antibodies and over time they build tolerance. And this is why it's believed they might start promoting the harmful effects versus live vaccines are so powerful that because of the training of innate immunity, and we discussed innate immunity in detail recently, the live vaccines can give you protection against other infections. This will be especially important in developing nations. 
And this is why it was not noticed in Western countries. In Western countries, the effect of non-live vaccines might not be very obvious. And the reason why, and the reason why that might not be obvious is because if a child is infected with, uh, with be, because the child took a non-live vaccine, they will be quickly taken to the hospital, everything is taken care of, no problem. But in a developing countries where access to healthcare might not be as easy, you can see how a child might be in a harm's way because of that. And therefore, we might have to consider and we might start paying, we might start have to pay attention to this, that when we're using vaccinations in developing nations, the children receiving vaccinations should perhaps be always taking live vaccine as a last vaccination. All right, so please check out the paper and please uh, leave comments on the paper. It's the most unusual way perhaps to get review of the paper, but this is just a recent product and nothing is perfect the first time you do it. That's just how it is. So I'm sure it will not be impossible to find mistakes so please check out the paper leave comments and if you find any issues and i can tell you we have already found some issues that we're correcting then let us know in the comments and i will look forward to seeing that all right that's all i have for you today and i look forward to seeing you in the next installment and as always thank you for your support please subscribe if you haven't already please share this video and um please check out my patreon account and my account as well that's how you can support us as well and i'll see you in the next installment bye everyone